is a whole new word. Hello everyone, we are Malaria Symptoms and Transmission. Hi, my name is Ahana Roy. My name is Angel Bandari. I'm Delaney Williams. I'm Nishi Kanaparthi. I'm Sophia Lee. And I'm Jacqueline Sadler. Nigeria has the greatest malaria burden in the entire world, with over 550 million cases and 200,000 deaths. Malaria is transmitted by Anopheles, which are female mosquitoes. Malaria is not to be mistaken as a disease, as it is caused by parasites. Malaria sources to over 40,000 of the total, or 40% of the total monthly healthcare costs in Nigerian households. The economic burden of malaria, indirect and direct, is up to 13% of the GDP, and malaria poses as a risk for 90% of its population. Some outcomes of malaria are climate, temperature, and um, precipitation-based factors that affect the environment. Overview. Common symptoms include intermittent fever, headache, weakness, and decreased appetite. Cause and transmission. Malaria is primarily transmitted when a person is bitten by a female Anopheles mosquito containing the parasite Plasmodium. Children under five years of age, pregnant women, those with compromised immune systems, and frequent travelers are a particularly high risk group for malaria. High risk areas include hot, wet, and humid climates because they are favorable breeding grounds and habitats for mosquitoes, especially in Nigeria. Impact on health in society. Heavy, um, sorry, malaria can cause a heavy burden on Nigeria, hindering its economic development as well as posing a risk to its population. There are two types of malaria, complicated and uncomplicated malaria. The symptoms for each vary because the symptoms of malaria uh, differ based off of the severity. So for comp uncomplicated malaria, we have symptoms such as intermittent fever, headache, and loss of appetite. While for complicated malaria, we have symptoms such as kidney failure, seizures, and severe anemia. Okay, so malaria, um, malaria comes in three stages, and the first stage is known as the cold stage, where a patient will typically feel cold or will experience the chills. The second stage is the hot stage, where it's common to have a high fever and flush dry skin. And the third stage is where the patient sweats everything out. Um, if malaria isn't treated, it could lead to long-term effects that could affect the patient for a while after even the malaria, even after the malaria is gone. And in some cases, it could lead to death. And some diagnostic challenges are that like malaria can often be mistaken for other types of diseases such as typhoid fever or the common cold. And especially in areas where um, tests are not as available, it could be hard to differentiate them. People in high-risk areas should all be aware of the negative impacts that malaria can cause. Some socioeconomic problems are loss of productivity, food insecurity, and impairing learning are all types of problems. Half a million children die every year because of malaria, and people in poverty and rural environments are at high-risk groups for malaria due to lack of resources. Therefore, they tend to treat themselves using at-home remedies, which normally doesn't end well because they don't have the proper knowledge for the correct amount of doses for the drugs. And research has proved that good access to healthcare reduces the disease by 66%. There are many individuals and groups at risk of malaria, such as pregnant women, children, infants, people with HIV and AIDS, or um, travelers. Next is the impact on health and society. So there are individual, public health, and socioeconomic impacts that are associated with malaria. First, uh, individually, malaria has both temporary symptom symptoms as well as long-term consequences, such as kidney failure, anemia, brain dysfunction, shock, and more. And these can negatively impact the futures of these patients and can lead to death in some instances. In terms of public health, um, malaria creates a large amount of health sector spending, and this can take a lot of time and resources and put a lot of um, pressure on the healthcare system, as well as create a national burden. So th th these burdens can slow economic development in these countries, which is why it's important to educate the citizens of these countries on how to prevent malaria. 
Um, for socioeconomic impacts, since malaria is so common, it leads to a lot of absenteeism in the workplace, and this will lead to a decrease of productivity because so many workers are not able to go to their jobs. And this slowed economic development will lead to continue the cycle of poverty as well. And then the last socioeconomic impact is that is the amount of child deaths in children under five. And this, so many of them are dying, it could impact the future of these countries because the youth are the future of the people. Okay, so our community workshop is about the education of the transmission process and the symptoms of malaria. Um, we are here to teach our target audience about the process and symptoms so they have more knowledge on it. Um, children are our target audience because, as we've been saying, children are a high-risk group because their immune systems aren't as developed, so they're more susceptible to malaria. Um, and we're just going to educate and inform children about the process and symptoms so that they are able to kind of know their own signs. So our first exercise for our workshop is a headbands game. So in this game, there'll have to be at least two players minimum and then 16 players maximum. All players will sit in a circle and get distributed two playing chips at the beginning of the game while the rest of the chips will go in the middle. Um, so one player will start with the headband and a symptom above the head and the player to their right will have to act out the symptom above their head. Each player will have one minute to guess. If the player correctly guesses the symptom, they will get an additional two chips. If they incorrectly guess the um, symptom, they'll have to give two chips. And once you run out of chips, you are out of the game. And then at the end of the game, the player with the most chips wins. So as you can see, these are basically the, the cards that we'll be using to show the symptoms. And some examples are nausea, fever, diarrhea, chills, headache, and, fever, and muscle pain. And on the left, these are pictures of the materials that we'll be using and a picture of the Velcro on the head. Okay, so the second game that we're gonna be playing is called Mosquito Tag. It's basically just tag, but instead we've adapted it to inform the children on the transmission of malaria. So basically, someone will be chosen as a mosquito. The mosquito will then wear a neon bracelet. And with this neon bracelet, they're gonna run around and just tag the other kids. And the, they do this until there's one kid left, and that kid will become the mosquito in the next round. So then it'll keep repeating, and we are gonna do multiple rounds of this, and the game's gonna last around 10 minutes. This is our itemized budget, and our total is $175.82. The remaining money will be donated to various Nigerian hospitals. So these are our handouts that we've created. We created a flyer to go in schools and hospitals, um, and like just community areas so that people can constantly see it. Um, we have the top six, not top six, most common symptoms that you will have of malaria, so fever, headache, chill, chills, weakness, dizziness, and loss of appetite. Um, and just a sign to say malaria is treatable. It's not something that if you, um, if you get malaria, you're gonna die immediately. Like, it can be treated and these signs, if you catch them early enough, you have a likely chance to survive and not have any more. All right, our second handout is a brochure, and this brochure details the transmission of malaria. So it'll fold like a trifold. It's kind of hard to see on there, but we will be handing it out during the mosquito tag game to the parents while their children are playing. And we'll also be giving it out to hospitals so that they can distribute it as well. So on the first side of the, the brochure, we will be talking about who's at high risk for contracting malaria, as well as describing congenital malaria and how that transmits. Okay. So on the second side of the brochure, we're gonna be talking about what malaria is and how it's transmitted. It's basically a general summary of each of the questions, and we've added some visual aids as well for uh, them to understand it better. These are our works cited. Okay, so we just wanted to thank the doctors for all their help and compassion that they've provided, and they've helped us grow as medical professionals, and we really appreciate all of you spending time away from your family to come and help us. Um, thank you all. Thank you so, so, so much. <laughs>